All right, so when we watch this episode, what does South Park say, you know? And this is, this is a lot coming from Jack Hett's uh, chapter in Respect My Philosophy, but it's senseless to blame corporations for the decisions of indiv individual assholes working at the corporations. I love that it's a quote uh, in, the, in this book, but like, I mean, that's a real challenge, right? Like, there's very little blame ever put on the people making the decisions, the, the people at the allocative level, the board of directors, etc. We blame Disney. We blame Monsanto, right? Monsanto is the evil villain, but like, who is doing all that stuff? Like, who's making those decisions, okay? The thing is this, too, and this comes out in, in, in the episode in so many ways, is, is that, you know, Actually, the concept of a corporation is pretty awesome, um, it, you know, and kind of necessary in at least in late capitalism or our, our current society. Um, and in this episode, it explores how corporations are actually can be cool, and that tends to be like a general um, view in South Park. Um, but who sucks? It's the people that make the shitty decisions. They're the ones who actually deserve the blame, but they can't be blamed for, for that. They can't be held accountable, okay? Um, and it's stupid to blame them for what corporations, uh, for what corporate, uh, it's stupid to blame corporations for what these people do. And that's kind of explored in this asshole, in this asshole, <laughs> in this episode, right? Because who's the asshole, right? It's Mr. Tweak, right? Like he, you know, he's the one that's doing all this evil manipulation of the boys, right? If you, you know, but with, with Prop 10 and pushing all that stuff. So, um, but what you, what you have in this episode too is like, who should be held accountable, right? The assholes who make the decisions. Also, us us consumers like we're responsible like if you if you don't want a Harbucks and you don't want corporate you know you don't like corporate coffee stop going there stop buying Nikes you know you know what I'm saying like stop playing video games you know stop buying cameras stop you know it's like we're part of the problem and they explore this in the Walmart right and something Walmart this way comes because we at the end who is Walmart you know it's us. It's the mirrors, the consumers. Like if we stop shopping there, like we can't kill it, right? The only way we can kill it is by not going there and supporting the small businesses, right? Um, but so that's really important. Like we have choices to consume. And at the end of Gnomes, you see everybody's like, tries the Harbucks coffee and it's actually really, really good. Okay. So, I mean, that's kind of like the moral, moral in that is that, you know, corporations unto themselves are not evil. It's, people who are, are evil and who are bad and who make bad decisions, like Mr. Tweak, right? Although he does not do that on behalf of a, of a corporation. Um, so we'll move on, and we'll still be talking about gnomes, so just keep that in your dome, um, but we'll talk a little bit about chapter 15, which talks and explores libertarian philosophy. Now, this is going to become a major part of the rest of the term, so um, we'll just kind of just keep these ideas in your head. But basically, uh, if you want to think about what libertarianism is, and we're not thinking about the uh, political party, although it's sort of extended from this philosophy, but libertarian is, I mean, you think about libertarian, you know, uh, it's, it's a philosophy of, of freedom, about individual choice, about um, less, less government, you know, that we should be sovereign people that make you know, are free to make our own choices. And the government should only step in and regulate what people do if it's harmful to society uh, in, ge in general, right? If our individual choices are to go out and have big parties while people are dying of a virus, like then the government should be able to step in and force you to quarantine, right? Because it's harmful to society. But you smoking a cigarette on campus is not harmful to society. It's annoying, it's gross, people may not like it, but it's not going to cause harm, okay? So libertarian philosophy is generally anti-government, anti-authority, in terms of like controlling and regulating our bodies, regulating our, de our decisions and choices, um, etc. And it takes the concept of the free market, kind of like what we talked about with social, socio-economic Darwinism, this idea like 
you know, the market will regulate itself. Like if, if a company makes bad products, you know, people won't buy it and the company will go out of, out of business or, you know, if, or competition will come in and make a better product that's cheaper, um, et cetera. And that's the theory often behind, um, you know, the free market. And so libertarian, I mean, just thinking about it broadly is like, we have a freedom of choice. We should be free to make our own choices about ourselves and what we do. Um, it's really about, you know, anti-authority. I mean, you see that clearly in South Park, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll explore that more as we move along throughout the term. Um, one of the main concepts you want to think about here is Adam Smith's concept of the invisible hand. Um, this is an old concept, but like the basic idea of, of this is that um, markets themselves, they're self-regulating. That governments shouldn't be regulating markets. If, you know, um, you know, if a company is price gouging and making a shitty product, ideally what will happen is another company will will come in and make a better product at a lower price point. That's what the concept of the invisible hand is, that the market will self-regulate itself based on consumer decisions and consumer needs, right? And basically what happens with libertarian philosophy is this concept of, you know, things will regulate themselves and government should not be doing it, um, uh, extends to all sorts of, you know, libertarian philosophy extends this logic of freedom to every realm of, of concept and, and thought. Um, so a little bit about Cantor. Um, he talks in some depth about how philosophy and uh, obs obscenity have coexisted over time. And he gets into detail about like comedy as liberative, or, you know, as liberating us from many of the restrictions of society. And so this is where South Park becomes important because it allows us to sort of liberate ourselves through laughter and that may be momentarily or for 20 minutes um you know but that liberation is really is really important there's a there's a great function to that he gets into a little bit about pc and what political correctness is and we'll spend a whole week plus on this but basically um pc as you know is is you know uh using some form of force uh you know, forceful measures, not physical <laughs> usually, um, to get people to alter or change their language um, to avoid discrimination and offending and, and offending people or other other groups. Okay, and South Park explores PC. South Park is, you know, um, been slammed for not being politically correct, and that's you know part of their their whole concept of freedom. Uh, in, in many ways that you shouldn't force people to change their language, that you should do that through other, other means, usually education, etc. So South Park really is as about as politically incorrect as you can get. Um, and there's a, supposed to be a purpose to that um, lack of PC, um, although who knows if that actually really happens. But what they try to do is they, they really try to satirize or parody all forms of political correctness, um, you know, and you know this idea of forcing equity and how that and how that and how that works and doesn't work in society often south park attacks what we call the left wing orthodoxy this could be left wing media uh, college faculty uh, that that there's a very strict strain of thought uh, on the left you know and self park likes to go in and rip that apart so that's why they do rip into like PETA and other leftist groups you know uh, you know uh, you know uh, you know any any left-leaning group you know South Park rips rips into uh, hippies etc and often what you have is you have a parody of like the um, you know the anti-corporate stuff you get from most of your professors probably, um, you know, in the media and the entertainment industries, which are often very anti-corporation. Um, and I don't know if I come across as that way. I definitely like hate on some companies, um, but I also am like, yo, like corporations like give me a sweet truck and like corporations give me underwear and like beer I like and chips. That's pretty cool. Like, you know, and, but they also, you know, individual assholes make some shitty decisions. But South Park likes to take 
how companies are represented in the mainstream media and by academics, etc., and deconstruct that. So they, they really did that in, in gnomes. Okay. One example I think that Cantor talks about where libertarian philosophy is exemplified is in this episode uh, called Cripple Fight, um, where you know there's there's a couple narratives to it. Um, uh, but you have Jimmy and Timmy who are in, in the Boy Scouts, and you know um, there's the whole idea. You know, one of the ideas is you have Big Gay Al, who uh, has been let go. He's a troop leader. He's been let go from the Boy Scouts because um, you know the Boy Scouts do not, uh, you know, as an organization, a private organization, uh, do not allow uh, or want you know gay troop leaders, and so they replace Big Big Gay Al with a pedophile. <laughs> Um, you know, um, and so the, the, the whole essence of libertarian philosophy and freedom that comes into this discussion is, is, is twofold. And they, they try to point out the flaws in both sides is this big gay Al should be free to be, be gay and, and, ex, and explore that and, and be that way and be happy. Like you'll notice through their episodes, they're, uh, very pro, um, LGBTQIA um, in, in, in many different ways, um, you know, for marriage equality and stuff like that. That's a libertarian view of like freedom of choice. Okay, so Al should be able to be who he wants to be and how he wants to be, right? But they also point out the paradox in that the they also suggest that the Boy Scouts organization should be, as a private organization, should be able to hire who they want to be troop leaders. They should be free to make those choices at what, as well, even if it discriminates against a group of people. You may disagree with this, um, but it's an interesting way to look at, you know, um, political correctness, correctness and equity is like, you know, yeah, it's not correct. It's inequitable to have those types of hiring practices um, simultaneously like if you hold a libertarian philosophy right like you should be able to make those choices as a private organization although it is discriminatory etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so they do point point out some of the paradoxes of freedom in so many ways right because you know the boy scouts are forcing big gay out out and then you know like there's pressure on the Boy Scouts and you know trying to force them into equitable hiring. So they kind of, that's kind of like a little bit of, of, of libertarianism um, espoused in, in one of the episodes. So back to gnomes, because Cantor talks about this, right? As we know, this is about free market, right? Like this is about competition. This is about um, a defense of capitalism. I mean, they they defend capitalism at, at many turns, right? And um, you know, as, as we saw by, you know, all the commercials and Mr. Tweak's sort of like folky, um, you know, uh, organic commercials, you know, um, really kind of deconstructs how corporations are framed by mainstream media and, and the left wing, um, left politicians and small businesses as these e evil monoliths. And that may not always be the case, okay? And what they try to point out in this episode, and I hope you saw this, is that small businesses can be as self-interested, as selfish um, as the large businesses. Um, and you just see it in a different way, and they try to present that with, with Mr. Tweak, right? Um, and they also explore how, you know, and this is again something that you see, like economic protectionism, where Mr. Tweak is trying to get Prop 10 enacted to protect his business. Just his business. It's a very selfish sort of thing. So they try to suggest that, you know, at the end of the episode, the town learns the sort of um, lesson of, of Adam Smith's invisible hand. And this is what he says in, in quotes, right? In absence of government intervention, corporations get where they are by serving the public, not by exploiting it. We see a little bit of, uh, more of this in um, something Wal Walmart this way comes, right? Because they finally destroy the Walmart and then Jim's drugs, you know, the, Jim's drugs gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they destroy Jim's drugs. That's kind of where it ends, it ends at, you know. But um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just like, you know, it's just an interesting, it's an interesting take where, where maybe you never saw 
that before in South Park because maybe, again, like I said, like South Park appeals to people on the left, people on the right, and everybody claims it as like theirs, but it's like kind of in the middle fucking with you on both, on both sides, okay? But when we think a little bit more about gnomes themselves, we can think about them in, in, in so many ways. And this is what Cantor brings up, right? Uh, the gnomes represent how capitalism, you know, an image of capitalism that's created and how it's opposed. And, and um, you know, and so he kind of talks about how, like, the gnomes represent, represent this, this, this framing in so many ways. I think he also says, too, like, you know, that... Um, this stuff is in front of us. Like this economic activity is like right in front of us. Um, and we don't usually see it. And that's kind of like the thing is no one sees what the gnomes are doing, that they're collecting underpants, something happens, and then they turn, turn a profit, right? Um, he suggests that, you know, instead, you know, instead of really thinking about economics and looking at economics, what we, what we tend to see, um, you know, is just that corporations take our money and, we buy something from them, and that's that. We don't ever see like the value of what they they provide to us. He also talks about how the gnomes could represent the economic literacy of the American public. I mean, um, there's a line in uh, the Walmart episode where Randy says it's free market economics. So he says it's economics. I have no idea how it works, but I love it. You know, something something to that extent. We also have the invisible hand, so they could represent the invisible hand. They could represent CEOs. And then basically, uh, he talks a little bit about how they could represent Marx's concept of, an, of alienation. Well, Marx's concept of alienation is that, um, you know, through labor exploitation and the creation of surplus value, um, we experience alienation as laborers. That is, we experience alienation from other, other people um, because we're working. Uh, we experience alienation from um, our own labor in the sense of like, we make a piece that goes into the computer. We don't make the whole computer or something like that. So we're a little bit alienated from ourselves. We're alienated from nature because our only engagement with nature tends to be through, um, you know, through uh, labor. And then we're alienated through the end, end of our, pro, you know, the, uh, what we make, um, you know, the end, end product of our labor. Um, because we, we only make a little piece of, of the pie. And many times we, we may not even own uh, something that we've made, you know.